Hm. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of RM Garage. This is going to be episode two of the camper build out series. In the last episode, we went to the junkyard and found a rear window from a Nissan pickup that I think will fit the camper shell here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to try to fiberglass it to fit. So it fits the sill pretty well, except for the top section here it needs to be extended downward a little bit longer. I have no fiberglass experience at all, but <laughs> I think it'll be fun to kind of learn and go through this process with you guys. So let's head to the auto parts store and pick up some fiberglass and let's get this whole thing built out. And hopefully we can get that window fitted. After the window's fitted, we'll go through and start repairing all the small cracks and imperfections with this thing, like right there and all the little hairline cracks. None of them go through to the other side. So pretty quick repairs with that stuff. Um, and then once the camper is all good and solid, we'll start working on the actual bed build out, the truck drawers and everything else. So let's go ahead and get this episode started. I don't know if this is gonna be enough, but I guess we'll find out. All right guys, well I picked up this fiberglass repair kit from AutoZone, which came with the fiberglass resin, this hardener, a plastic, this plastic spreader, and one fiberglass mat. I picked up an additional mat just in case we need it, because I'm not sure if one mat will be enough. And also I picked up some 80 grit sandpaper. So let's go ahead and pull the camper into the garage and get started on this. Well, when we were moving this thing off the truck, I decided that I probably should wash it before we get started on it. Pretty dirty. <laughs> Okay, so we got the camper shell pulled into the garage and as you can see the window is actually a pretty close fit. All we're going to have to do is trim the edges here and then as I was saying fiberglass the top a little bit farther down so that it meets the edge of the window there. And then we should be able to pop in the rubber seal that holds this window in and have a window on our camper. I have a feeling these Harbor Freight sawhorses might be next on their recall list. Look at that. I'm not sure if you guys can see it in here, but in that corner over there and right here, we got some mold that we're working with. Definitely gonna have to clean the inside of this camper shell out before we even consider sleeping in here or storing any of our stuff in here. I've been kind of screwing around with this thing off camera and it's getting late guys. So we're gonna close up shop and get back to it tomorrow. All right guys, day number two. I'll be honest with you, I laid there all night thinking about this camper shell like a crazy person. And I realized that some of the ideas that I had were kind of dumb. So originally I had planned to bring the top down to kind of meet the window. And the whole reason why I'm doing this is because the window that I bought, which is over there, the window that I bought doesn't fit the cutout from top to bottom. So we need to modify the cutout slightly to be able to accept the window. So I think it might be a better idea to fiberglass the bottom up instead of bringing the top down because the bottom's already damaged. You see all the damage there and right here and the whole thing's, you know, it's not level. Here, take a look at this. This thing has some issues. So it might be better to fiberglass the bottom instead of the top. It's 115 degrees outside, which means it's an excellent day to fiberglass a camper shell in the garage. One of the things I was having a lot of problems with was figuring out how to trace this onto cardboard to get the template of the window onto the camper shell. And I turned this into like some big old math equation and was having such a hard time with it. But it turns out that, because basically I need to account for the inside of this seal here, because that's where the lip of the camper shell will go. But the inside most spot of this seal is just the inner frame of the window. So all we have to do is just trace 
this on the cardboard. So this was my life last night trying to figure out how to get the right size cutout to trace onto the camper shell. As you can see, it is a whole stack of failure. I'm putting the jack stands on it so it doesn't move. It'll probably still move. So here's the window outline, and I'm gonna have to cut it in however much this is, about half an inch, because that's the actual depth of the seal. So the lip will go inside of that, so I need to make sure that I cut the outline a half an inch in from the outline I just took, and then transfer that onto the camper shell, and that is the size of cutout that needs to be on the camper shell. Well, we've got the cardboard template of the window mocked up to the camper shell, and guys, am I gonna ruin this thing or what? Look at this gap that I have to fill. We're working with a two and a quarter inch gap. I don't even have words. I'm gonna try my best to do this, but um, this video might not end with a, a uh, this might not be a happy ending. All right, let's get to cutting, I guess. Can't forget my trusty safety glasses. All right, folks, don't breathe this. I can't lie, I'm pretty impressed by the strength of this fiberglass. This is a messy job. So now that those pieces are cut out, the window according to my measurements, should fit on the top and the sides, but not the bottom. So I guess let's see if my measurements were good. All right, well, as you guys can see, the sides and the top fit just fine as I expected. Uh, you're just gonna have to take my word for it. I don't have the patience to get this thing in there right now with a window and then take the whole thing back out again. So I just put the seal in there, but I did test fit the window off camera and it looks like it'll all fit well. So just gonna have to fiberglass this gigantic gap on the bottom. So let's get started on that. So I think I'm about ready to start the fiberglassing. I read online that if you wrap a piece in aluminum foil, the fiberglass won't stick to it. So what I did here was I cut out a piece of wood and then wrapped it in aluminum foil. And we're basically just gonna fiberglass this area up against it. So we'll see how it goes. Let's mix up this resin and uh, start doing some test some test fiberglassing. I'm gonna start by mixing up only four ounces so that if I screw this up, I don't ruin the whole bottle of resin. Well, here goes nothing. It says to brush two to three inches beyond the area that you intend to repair. We're not really repairing, we're like creating. So I guess let's see how this goes. Got some cheap Harbor Freight brushes here. Ooh, this stuff's really thick. Now, I'm not sure how much time I have to work with this because it's really hot outside. I'm gonna try to go kind of fast. And it says to start dabbing the resin on it to make it stick. This resin's getting really, really cured really fast. Guys, it's already, it's already jelly. I think I mix too much and it's too hot outside. It's rock hard. And it's really hot. Like a chemical reaction going on in there. All right, well, lesson learned. Yeah, this thing is <laughs> rock solid. This is exactly why I mixed a small amount before I mixed a large amount, because I screwed it up quickly. So we're gonna do one ounce at a time from this point forward. All right, let's try this again. This brush is done, obviously. All right, let's try this again. Just gonna lay some resin down really fast. Apparently I have to work really fast. This is going better. Look at the difference between the mixture of the resin between the left and the right. This one's all chunky and probably gonna take forever to dry and the one on the right's a lot better laid down, I think at least. Well, my iPhone just turned off. Um, it overheated. It said iPhone's too hot. It needs to cool down before you can use it. Has anyone ever seen that before? If you have, I assume you live in Arizona or California or something, New Mexico, some hot area. 
I've never seen that before, actually. That's a first for me. All right, this is looking a lot better. Like, a lot better. This is looking pretty good to me for my first time ever fiberglassing. So some things that I've learned so far from doing this is that when you mix the resin, make sure that you mix it pretty conservatively because if you mix too much too fast, well, you saw what happened. It immediately hardens up and then you're stuck with, you know, jelly that isn't good for anything. And another thing that I've learned is that you kind of want to work quickly but not too fast or else you'll be splattering the resin everywhere. Don't try to be perfect with the fiberglass. You can always touch it up later, sand it down, shape it however you want it to be. You're also probably gonna wanna wear clothes that you don't care about because this stuff gets everywhere and absolutely wear gloves because it is so sticky. But anyway, I think we reached a stopping point right now. As you can see, we're at the end of my little backing plate here and I kinda wanna let this cure before we do anything else with it. Hopefully what I read on the internet is true and it actually peels off of the aluminum foil because if it doesn't then we're gonna have another problem to figure out. Well as you guys can see the aluminum foil did peel off of the fiberglass and I was able to get the fiberglass totally laid down and cut it down to size and I got this thing as level as I could looks pretty good to me a lot better than it did. You can see the old material under the new material and how how unlevel all of it was uh, but the window is pretty close to fitting. I just have to trim the sides down a little bit and I think we should be able to pop that window in here. I forgot my face mask. This stuff is crazy. I don't want to breathe it. All right, well, as you guys can see, the window is installed, and in my opinion, it looks really good. Kind of looks like it was made for this camper. I'm pretty surprised I was able to get this done considering I've never worked with fiberglass before. I'm probably gonna have to trim this right side a little bit more. As you can see, the seal doesn't really sit flush up against the camper shell. So probably gonna trim that a little bit more just to get this to fit better. And other than that, the only thing left to do is put a layer of filler over this fiberglass to make everything look smooth. But overall, pretty happy with the, uh, with the result here. In case you were curious what it looks like on the inside, it looks like this. So I actually installed this backwards. This seal is normally facing out. I decided to face it in so that the latch would face outward so that I could open it from inside the truck. Uh, of course, I could have just reversed the window in the seal, but you know, this works too. So that's how it looks from the inside. So I just marked this thing where I think it needs to be trimmed a little bit more, which is this corner right here. And then I'm gonna start on the body filler to smooth this whole area out. Before I start laying down the body filler, I'm just roughing up the surface here with 60 grit sandpaper, and that'll also help knock down the high spots to kind of level out the surface and get it ready to apply the filler. All right, guys, I just finished sanding down this fiberglass, and as you can see, there's two problem areas here. If you remember at the beginning of the video, I way over-concentrated that resin to hardener mixture, and it was drying out way too fast, and basically it caused two bubbles that just never cured. So I sanded those down, and I sanded all the rest of the fiberglass down, and I think we're ready to start laying some filler down. too much. Well guys, it seems that the trend here is that I tend to use too much hardener. We're just gonna let this dry and then come back and sand it later. All right, so I just got done sanding down all the body filler. As you can see, it's currently 11 o'clock at night. Had some things I had to take care of before I could get back to sanding this. And uh, yeah, I just took care of it late at night sometimes that's just how things go but i have a feeling i'm probably going to have some people ask or at least have the thought why did i go through so much of a hassle just to fit a 1990s nissan pickup truck window into a toyota camper shell that's not really worth anything and the reason is is because now i have a new skill i've basically created something from nothing here and i feel confident that if i ever needed to fiberglass something in the future I could probably get it done. Now, I'm not saying I'm now a professional fiberglasser after just doing a small window frame, but what I am saying is that because I jumped into something that I wasn't familiar with, I only had 
the option to learn or fail. I'm going a lot deeper into this than I thought I would, but what I'm trying to say is that sometimes it's good to try things you're not comfortable with. Anyway, I'm gonna apply one more layer of body filler, hit the hay, and then finish this job in the morning. Well, the filler is done. It turned out pretty good. There's only a couple spots I'm not too happy with, and that's this area right here and that area over there in the corner. I'm pretty sure that those are two spots that are gonna show through the paint. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this area that we did the work on here with some primer and some black spray paint. I'm not gonna paint the entire camper yet because I haven't decided on what I wanna paint it with. So we're just gonna get the area that we did the work on covered for now. Yeah, this area right here, you can see some imperfections, but it's all right. Well, as you guys can see, the fiberglass is done and the window is installed. I think it turned out great. It took a lot of work to get to this point, but it was totally worth it. Before this thing had a window, it had this seal that pressed up against the cab and well, it wasn't sealing at all. So that's why we installed the window. Plus, as I said before, we learned a new skill. Also, let me know in the comments below how you think I should paint this. I was thinking about using Raptor liner or some other bed liner. So let me get your guys' opinion on that. Should I use bed liner or should I paint this thing with normal black paint? Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. And as always, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.